It's late at night in a laboratory and janitor Ron is cleaning the corridors while listening to music. However he pauses when he notices scientist Peter is still around working late. Ron tries to pull a prank by putting his body against the glass, but Peter is too concentrated on his job and doesn't notice. Then Ron enters the lab to clean it too, so Peter leaves the room to get a snack. While Peter has trouble with the machine malfunctioning, Ron notices there's a bed set up behind some curtains. Behind them he finds a sleeping man with black veins and a label on his wrist that says DOD, but Ron thinks the man's name is DOD. Suddenly the patient moves his hand and startles Ron, causing him to accidentally hit the life monitor. The screen begins showing a flat line and Ron panics, so he sits on top of the man to start CPR. When the patient opens his bleeding mouth, Ron complains about the smell and fills it with mints before going back to CPR. However he presses so hard that the man's stomach breaks and as Ron screams, the guy opens his red eyes. It turns out this guy is patient zero of a new zombie infection, and he immediately attacks Ron. The two of them run around the lab exchanging hits while Peter still struggles against the machine, not noticing a thing even when Ron puts his bloody hands on the window. When Peter is ready to give up on the snacks, he turns around and finds a zombified Ron, who quickly jumps on him and kills him. The next day, Scout Leader Rogers together with his three group members Ben, Carter, and Augie are at a school trying to find new recruits using a very cringy scout video. Unfortunately, everyone thinks they're losers for still being scouts at this age and nobody wants to join. Before leaving, Rogers announces Augie will get the highest badge in scouting, so they'll be holding the ceremony at night at a campsite. Afterward on their way home, Carter and Ben discuss the matter of scouting because the only reason they're still members is for Augie's sake. Augie has felt lonely since he lost his dad and the scouts are all he has. But they're graduating next year and they haven't gotten any girls or gone to any parties, which Carter blames on the scout uniform because it makes them look like children. Since they're so busy arguing, they don't see a deer standing in the middle of the road and accidentally run over it, which punctures a car tire. After checking on the dead deer, Carter takes a selfie with it while Ben begins working on changing the tire. At that moment, a car stops by with Kendall, Jeff, and Chloe. Kendall is Carter's older sister and Ben has always had a crush on her, but she's dating Jeff and thinks of Ben like a little brother. The situation is rather awkward, especially when Carter begins to flirt with Chloe terribly and Jeff makes fun of Ben for the uniform. When the subject of the deer comes up, they notice the body isn't on the road anymore and only left a stain behind. Meanwhile Carter asks about the party everyone is talking about, and to everyone's surprise, Jeff invites them to come. When they return home, Carter insists on a very stupid plan, they'll show up at Augie's ceremony, and once he falls asleep, they'll sneak out to go to the party and return before dawn. Ben reluctantly agrees. Their conversation is interrupted by Ms. Fielder, who threatens them as she reminds them to get out of her driveway before returning to her dozens of cats. Later in the afternoon, Rogers is on his way to the camping site when he finds a tag with the name Peter on it, although the address indicates it couldn't be possible for it to have fallen this far. Rogers notices something moving in the bushes and when he takes a look, he's suddenly attacked by the deer the boys hit, because it's become a zombie too. Using his scout knife, Rogers stabs the deer in the eye to kill it. However when he turns around, he finds zombie Peter, who quickly bites Rogers. Meanwhile Carter and Ben go to the convenience store and Carter pays off a hobo to buy them alcohol because they're minors. The hobo goes inside to do the transaction, but he's barely sane and buys the wrong things, so Carter rushes into the store and causes a scene. At that moment, a beautiful woman named Denise comes out of the store and her bag strap breaks, but Ben helps her by fixing the strap with a scout knot. To thank him for the help, Denise goes inside and buys the drinks for the boys before returning to her job in the adult club across the street. The duo considers following her, but there's a very scary doorman that won't allow minors in and the guys run away. Sometime later, the three young scouts are surprised that Rogers hasn't arrived. Augie thinks it's a test to get his badge, so the boys proceed to prepare the camping site. Augie is incredibly prepared while Carter is messy, but the trio still has a lot of fun going through the usual activities and makes a good team. Eventually night falls and Rogers still doesn't show up, so the boys chat around the campfire while roasting marshmallows. Augie is happy to have his friends with him after his dad abandoned him and makes them promise scouts forever. Meanwhile the party is in full swing, but Kendall is worried that the boys haven't come. Jeff doesn't look surprised and distracts her with a dance. A few hours later, Augie is finally asleep and Carter and Ben sneak out of the campsite. On their way to the car, they find Roger's knife on the ground, which worries Ben because he knows Rogers wouldn't go anywhere without it. He also notices footprints on the mud, but Carter doesn't care and drags Ben to the car. Unfortunately Augie is waiting for them there and knows about the party, so it's time for Ben and Carter to admit they don't want to be scouts anymore because they need to grow up. Hurt and disappointed, Augie tells them to leave. Moments later, Ben and Carter make it back to town and notice it's very empty for a Saturday night. They stop the car by the convenience store to change out of their uniforms, and Ben's bad feelings get worse when he notices the store's glass door is broken. His thoughts are interrupted by Carter, who points out that the doorman isn't at the club's entrance anymore so this is their chance. The duo enters the club and Ben discovers it's empty as well but he still sits in front of the stage, where a dancer starts her show. 
Because of the dark lights, her black veins aren't clear. Soon Carter joins them and begins throwing money at the dancer, who pulls a special trick on the pole and ends up upside down. Suddenly the woman's neck breaks and splashes blood all over the boys. To make matters worse, the doorman also shows up as a zombie and attacks them. While Ben runs into the bathroom and the doorman follows him, the dancer attacks Carter, who after some struggle, uses a broken bottle to immediately kill her. The doorman finds Ben in one of the stalls and when he's about to attack again, Denise shows up and blows his head up with a shotgun. Meanwhile a lonely Augie decides to go to Roger's house. Nobody answers the door yet it's unlocked, thus Augie enters the house and when he doesn't find his teacher, he leaves a message on a little board. He's about to leave when his stomach begins hurting, so he rushes to the bathroom to relieve himself. The smell is so bad that he opens the window, but he's too distracted by his own hygiene to notice there's a zombie in the garden that tries to reach inside for him. Augie moves out of the way just in time and returns to the living room, where he's shocked to find a zombified Rogers. The teacher begins chasing his student around the house and Augie tries to defend himself with whatever he can find, including Rogers' Dolly Parton merchandise collection. Nothing seems to work so Augie tries to escape into the basement, only to be pushed down the stairs by Rogers. Another chase begins but this time, Augie grabs a spray and a lighter to set Rogers on fire before beating him with an oar. Then Augie ties Rogers to a chair using all the scout knots he knows, making sure to put his toupee back in place before leaving. Back at the club, Denise confirms the zombie apocalypse is happening and that they need to escape. A zombie tries to stop them and Denise quickly shoots him before they get in the car, driving away as a whole horde appears. Unfortunately the boys were very bad at changing tires and the tire from earlier comes off, forcing the car to stop. Ben and Carter rush to fix it while Denise continues to shoot zombies, but soon she runs out of bullets and has to hit them with the shotgun itself. After lots of struggling, the boys finish fixing the tire and they get in the car right before a faster zombie reaches them and breaks a window. The trio drives away to the sheriff's office but they're too late, there's a sign saying all survivors had been evacuated to the security checkpoint at mile 17. The boys begin to argue over what to do but at that moment the zombie horde arrives, so the trio runs inside and locks the door with a flagpole. Unfortunately the sheriff is there and has become a zombie too, so he begins shooting his gun without control. Cater grabs the emergency axe and Ben grabs a fire extinguisher, and together they bring down the sheriff quickly. Unfortunately the horde breaks the glass door and starts making its way inside. The trio immediately runs and the only safe spot they can find is inside a cell, where the zombies can't reach them. While waiting, Ben and Carter discuss the subject of Augie, and Denise judges them for their actions. Carter tries to take a nap while Ben carves a mop into a stake and chats with Denise, allowing them to bond over their loser lives. Suddenly music can be heard outside coming from an empty car. The zombies rush out of the station to look for a fresh victim, so the trio needs to find a way to escape. Ben takes Carter's rubbers and they begin tying them to the end of the mop to try to reach the cell key. Meanwhile outside, it's revealed that Augie turned on the music to distract the zombies and now he's sneaking around to reach the station, only to accidentally bump against a car and activate its alarm. The zombies hear this and begin to chase him, so Augie makes his way inside just in time to find the trio pushing the key down. Augie accidentally kicks the key into a hole, but he uses his scout skills to pick the lock. While he works, a zombie shows up, but Ben quickly stabs him with the mop right before Augie opens the door. Then the group runs out of the building and locks a gate behind them to keep the zombies on the other side. This causes the shirt of a female zombie to accidentally open, and Carter stops to cop a feel before leaving. Moments later, the group is making their way down the road when they discover an abandoned truck. As they get closer, they find the driver is also a zombie, but Augie thinks he can communicate with him as if it was a wild animal. Using his scout knowledge, Augie manages to make a connection with the zombie through weird animal sounds, and when he notices the zombie is wearing a Britney Spears shirt, he starts singing Hit Me Baby one more time. Carter soon joins him and they actually manage to make the zombie sing along, but their little cute moment is interrupted when the zombie is suddenly shot by Corporal Reeves. Moments later, Reeves takes away the group in his military vehicle, explaining there has been a virus outbreak and the perimeter has been contained. Everyone in town has been evacuated, and Ben wonders if that includes the people at the party, but Reeves doesn't know anything about a party. They turn the car around and rush to the place of the party, only to find it empty. It turns out Jeff had given them a fake address because they're losers. Augie says this is karma, triggering another argument during which they physically fight like little kids. Meanwhile Denise turns around and discovers Reeves had been bitten all along and just now he's turning into a zombie. Reeves tries to attack her, but the boys quickly come to pull him back and a furious Denise kills Reeves by hitting him repeatedly with the car door. At that moment, a message comes through the car radio announcing they'll bomb the area in two hours. Carter remembers that his sister writes everything down in her diary, so they decide to go to his house to get the address of the party. Moments later, they sneak into the house through the backyard to avoid the horde, unaware that Ms. Fielder is spying on them through her window. They begin looking for Kendall's diary in her room but suddenly they hear a noise downstairs, so Augie and Carter go to check. Denise wonders why Ben never told Kendall about his feelings, and Ben explains he's a loser with no experience. 
To give him a boost of confidence, Dennis teaches him how to kiss, not noticing there are zombies outside the window trying to look inside by jumping on the trampoline. Downstairs, Carter is suddenly attacked by a zombified Miss Fielder, and all the screaming gets the attention of the horde. In the struggle, the boys cause Miss Fielder to lose her dentures, so when she jumps on Carter's backside, she pulls down his pants to have a feast with her tongue. Augie has to fight another zombie off before he pushes Ms. Fielder off Carter and together they lay her down on the window, where they cut her head off. Van and Denise come to join them, but more zombies are coming so they run to hide in Kendall's room, blocking the door with furniture. They try to escape through the window, but there are zombies there too and they have to pull Ben back before he gets grabbed by them. The horde starts beating down the door, so the group decides to escape by jumping on the trampoline and then into the neighbor's yard. Everyone crosses safely but when it's Ben's turn, he sees Kendall's diary falling from the drawers, so he comes back to grab it. At that moment the zombies break in, so when Ben is about to jump, he slips and almost falls, only managing to save himself by grabbing a zombie's sausage. The piece of meat begins stretching and breaking, so Denise distracts the zombies in order for Ben to fall safely on the trampoline and join his friends. Afterward, the group hides in Ms. Fielder's house and makes it to the kitchen when they start hearing some noises. Suddenly a zombie cat appears on Augie's shoulder and they quickly beat it down with a pan, but the rest of the cats show up too and they've also become zombies. Terrified, the group runs to the garage and steals Ms. Fielder's car to escape. Outside they find the road blocked by Rogers, who somehow escaped, but they simply run over him and drive away. Moments later, Ben says goodbye to Denise, who leaves town on a bike to get in contact with the military while the boys save the partygoers. Carter and Augie are skeptical of this plan because the bomb is coming, but Ben convinces them with a heartfelt speech about the scouts being the last line of defense. First though, they stop at a hardware store and they use all their scout knowledge to make weapons and arm themselves to the teeth. Outside the party building, a zombie hears the music and sneaks inside. Meanwhile Chloe has met a new guy, who brings her to a dark place to get frisky. Since they just met though, she only allows him to use his mouth while she watches a video on her phone. At that moment the zombie finds them and kills the guy before taking his place, but when she looks down, she screams. On the dance floor, Kendall is worried about her brother and his friends, so Jeff finally confesses he gave them a fake address, which makes Kendall furious. They're suddenly interrupted by Chloe, who has become a zombie too and jumps on Jeff to bite him. Kendall screams and tries to run away, but by opening the doors, she lets the horde enter the building and attack all the teens. Chaos, blood, and horror take over the party, but suddenly a whistling sound makes everyone turn around. The scouts are here and begin fighting the zombies, killing them with their makeshift weapons and excellent teamwork. Carter is sad to kill his crush Chloe, but Ben enjoys destroying Jeff. Then Ben tries to save Kendall, but when he's blocked by a zombie, his friends clean the way for him to play White Knight successfully. Afterward, the scouts tell the other teenagers to run away, locking the doors so the zombies can't follow them. The trio stays inside as a distraction and tries to find another exit, only to end up locked in the basketball court. Seeing no hope, the boys apologize for their behavior and admit they've had fun being scouts. Suddenly Augie reveals he's prepared a bomb in case of an emergency and takes it out, but he's having trouble igniting it. At that moment, Denise appears at the garbage chute, and Ben and Carter immediately follow her. Augie stays one more minute to finally ignite the bomb, then he runs away right before it explodes. The group makes it outside and watches the fire that takes the zombies down, only to discover Rogers is waiting for them to attack. Fortunately the military finally arrives to put an end to the situation and Rogers is blown up. The next morning at the army camp, Ben tries to ask Denise out, but she reminds him who he really has feelings for. With his new confidence, Ben approaches Kendall and kisses her. Augie celebrates this development, but Carter is disgusted by having to watch his sister get some. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.